evenly distributed. We're just going to do a little sketch here. Okay, bell-shaped curve. The mean is 232 grams. And standard deviation is 3.6. So 235.6. And this is going to be minus or is 228.4. All right. And so you're looking for weighing less than 233. So here's 233, and it's all of this. Well, we know it's going to be greater than what? What is it from 0 or negative infinity to 232? What's that going to be? That's 0 0.5. So we know it's going to be a little more than 0 0.5, maybe 0 0.6, maybe 0 0.5. Seven, we'll see. Normal. CDF. Don't ever do PDF. PDF is a Y value. We don't. What do Y values mean for normal? Nothing. So you go normal CDF. The low, the low here is like negative ten thousand, comma, and then the high is going to be two thirty three point nine one, comma, mean two thirty two comma, standard deviation. And what did you get for a probability? Probability. What did you get? Point seven what? Zero two. Isn't it nice to take a little moment to draw that picture, though, so you got a visual of what that number is and what it should be? 70% makes sense. It's more than 50 and less than 85. Good. So one quick thing I want to wrap up with normal. So normally distributed, one of the things that you're going to do is sometimes you have to find the Z value. And that will give you X, the sample you have, minus mu over the standard deviation. Sometimes you'll have to find the z value, or sometimes they'll give you a probability. Like, let's say you have a probability equal to 0 0.30, 30%. You go inverse norm of 0 0.30, and that'll give you a z value. And once you know the z value, then what you can do is you can use it to find mu or whatever you're trying to find. Okay? So a common question might be, what if I had a probability of uh, 0.70 and I had mu equal to 2.5 and delta equal to 0.1? What uh, what samples could we have? Let's say they're masses. What masses would be available to make that true? So in other words, what value for x would make this true? Well, the first thing you need is a z. So we got to find z. So would you quickly take your calculator? What's inverse normal of 0.7? What is that? Four decimals. Point, well, it's not going to be point. It's going to be, did you get it? 2.55. Okay, that's the Z value. Okay, anybody second that? Seems high to me. Seems high to me. Oh, point what? Five what? Five, two, four, four? Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. It's past zero. It's in between zero and one standard deviation. So that's good. All right. So now, this is going to be your z value. Now you put it into your formula. Okay. And so z is point five, two, four, four. We're looking for x. We know mu is 2.5. We know 
uh, delta is 0.1. Okay, so then here you go. Multiply by 0.1 and you'll get 0 0.05244 equals x minus 2.5. So this is just going to be 2.5052. It's going to be your x is all that's going to be. So you can use inverse normal to change a probability into a z. This turns a probability into a z value. Then once you have the z value, you put it into the formula. Z equals x average minus mu, uh, mu over delta. Another one I've seen is they'll have two probabilities and two of these, and you'll have to find the mu and delta, two equations, two unknowns. 